there will be times in your code where you need to throw exceptions when things don't quite go according to plan. So that's okay writing the code to throw those exceptions, but how do you actually test that those exceptions are thrown in the correct places and in the correct circumstances? In this one, that's what we're gonna cover and I'm gonna show you how we can test that. So. This recording is taken from my testing PHP course, which teaches you everything you need to know about testing PHP applications. To know more, just follow the link below this video. I think what we'll do is we'll go and create a new class and we'll call this user. And so the example we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to set a password, but we're gonna have a minimum password length. And when a password is attempted which does not meet that minimum length, then we'll throw an exception to say this password is not the correct length. Okay, so let's have a private uh, string, and this will be password, and then we'll just create, we don't need a getter at the moment, we'll just create a setter for this. Okay. And so you'll notice that PHP Storm has added a dock block here. With PHP 8, you don't actually need a lot of this stuff because you've sort of got self-documenting code. It's telling us that uh, we're not returning anything and that the password should be a string. So I'm just going to get rid of that and see what PHP Storm is complaining about here. Okay, we'll just disable that. Great. Okay, so... Here we are setting the password, but first we want to check if the password is of a particular length. So if string length, so we have a function strlen that will check the length of a string password. So we're checking the length of that password, and if that is less than eight characters, then what we want to do is throw an exception. And so we'll go with uh, invalid argument exception, and then we'll give it a message the password must be at least eight characters. Let's actually drop this onto its own line to make it easier to read. So I've bumped up the font so it's easy for you uh, to watch it on the screen, which means sometimes things go off the edge, but this should be okay. Let's actually go and test this now. What do we need to do? We need to create a user test. So inside of the tests, user test, and same as always, this will extend PHP unit test case. And then our exception or our test will be called exceptions are thrown for short passwords. And so we need a user. And initially what I'm gonna do is actually just run this without putting any exception handling in there. And I'll just try and uh, set a password and we'll just say short. Okay, let's actually go and run this to see where we're at so far. Okay, and as you can see, we're getting the invalid argument exception being thrown in our code. So now we need to put up something in our test which says we're expecting this exception to be thrown. Let's do this now, and what you do is you put it before the actual code which will make that exception be thrown. And so the exception is going to be thrown from my set password method. I need to put a line in here to say expect a exception to be thrown when we try this code. So this expect exception message, and as the argument you need the message which you created for this exception. So let's go over and we can just copy this from here and paste that in there. And then we'll run our test again. And so this time we have one test, two exceptions. And so if I change this, you'll see that it should now fail. Failed asserting that the exception message, the password must be at least eight characters, contains the password I've put NUST be at least four characters. So we'll go and actually change our typo. I always seem to type Ns instead of Ms. Okay, and we'll change this back to eight. And something else I'll show you is it doesn't have to match this uh, message exactly. What you can do is just put part of it. It just does. It just checks that the string contains part of this message. So we can say at least eight characters 
and this test will still pass. So that's pretty good because uh, you might decide later that you want to actually change this message to something else, but you know that you're going to uh, keep this part, for example. You know you're going to be checking for eight characters, but this wording you might decide it's going to change later. So it's always handy to just be able to put part of the message and then you know at least you are getting the correct message. Okay, so now I'll show you how you can sort of achieve the same thing as what we're doing here, except by using a try catch block in your test. And we'll go and test a different condition this time. What we'll do is we'll actually have uh, excluded characters, so characters which mustn't be in the password. I'm gonna keep this example fairly simple, and we'll just have one excluded character which will be the at symbol. And so now what we need to do is check if the string length is less than eight or if it contains the at symbol. Let's drop this down onto another line so it's easier to read. So if the string length is less than eight or if it contains the at symbol, then we're still gonna throw out the invalid argument exception. Let's go back to our user test and we'll add a new test here. We shall say test exception is thrown if the string contains excluded characters. Exception thrown if password contains excluded characters. And this time, instead of doing it the way we did it last time, we're gonna actually create a try catch block and our catch will be looking for an invalid argument exception. Okay, so in the first part here, we're gonna do exactly the same. User equals new user. And we're gonna try and set a password which contains an at symbol. So user set password, and we will go with the good old, probably the most common password in the world. But when we get to this stage, if it's allowed us to set a password, then it means that our exception hasn't been thrown. And so in which case, our test has really failed, hasn't it? We should be expecting an exception to be thrown, or our code has failed rather than our test. We should be expecting an exception to be thrown, and that hasn't happened. So we need to force this to fail, and the way we can do that is using PHP Unit's built-in fail method, where you force your test to fail. Okay, and we'll say a Invalid, invalid argument exception should have been thrown. If, however, we reach this part, then we know our code is working correctly, the exception has been thrown, and then you can perform whatever assertions you like. So let's go and have a look here. The password must be at least eight characters. Uh, we'll change it to eight valid characters, and that will cover the um, scenario where we're not using excluded characters. So let's actually just use this eight valid characters. Well, actually, this assert. And if you remember our assertions lesson, we had this one assert string contains string. And so we'll say eight valid characters. And we are checking in the actual exception message. Okay, so. Let's actually go and run this test now. And we've changed this, so we need to actually go and change this part as well. So this is a good thing with tests, they sort of tell you what to do. Okay, so now we have two tests, three assertions, and we've looked at two different ways of uh, expecting exceptions to be thrown and handling exceptions, making sure that they are being thrown where we expect them. And the second part is we used a try catch block, which is something which you typically see in your code. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is errors. So we'll revisit our cart test. If you look what we did here, we set the price to 10. Let's go and actually have a look at our cart. And when we set the price, we're actually saying this needs to be a float. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and set the price as a string, and I'll show you a few things in this one, I think. So a public function, and we'll just say test. An error happens when price is set as a string. 
Okay, good. So error happens when price is set as string. All we need is just this line here. We don't need to do any of this stuff. And initially, what I'm going to do is try and set this as 599. And in fact, we will borrow this bit here because what I'm going to check is if we can actually get past this point without an error being thrown. So, in which case, when I call this line, if this allows me to do this, then it means that we haven't experienced an error here. So what I'm going to do is actually just dump out the net price. Let's go and actually run this test. So PHP vendor bin PHP unit and tests cart test. Let's get the actual name of the test. I'll copy that and we'll filter. Okay, so we're getting a float uh, 7.188, which means we have reached this line and no errors were thrown. There's a way in PHP where you can set it so that you're requiring strict types, so that when I, if I try and set a string here and it's expecting a float, then we will get a type error. The way we do it is we need to add this line in our client code. So note, I'm putting this in our client code, i.e. the place where I am actually calling this method, not the file where I'm defining it. So I'm not putting this in the cart class, I'm putting it in the actual test where I'm actually trying to call this method. And what it is, is this declare strict types equals one. And so now we should have strictness. And what was happening before was that this string was actually being cast to a float by PHP, which can be what you want in some circumstances but in other circumstances it won't be what you want you want strictness and let's go and actually run this again now great stuff so we're getting a failure the most important part that we're looking for here is type error this is a type error so how do we go and expect an error in our code and it's the same as when we did with exceptions so you need to do it before you're expecting to encounter the error and always do is say this expect error. Notice when we did exceptions I had to pass the type of exception. In this scenario I just need to say I am expecting an error, an error and that will suffice. Let's go and actually we'll just delete this line because that's now redundant. So we're expecting an error when we call this. Let's try this and now our test is passing. We're back to green and the same with um, exceptions. We can expect certain error messages expect error message let's have a look what the message was if we can find it uh, here it is must be of type float so like i said previously I, we do the exceptions it doesn't have to be the full message it can just be a substring of the message let's go and paste this in here and now that still passes so both of these expected uh, outcomes are actually happening something i should mention about this is actually asserting that you're getting error messages which aren't error messages which you created, the ones which have been created by PHP, is probably quite risky because if PHP changes and they decide that they're going to change the wording of this in future versions, then you're left with a test that has gone stale. So in real life, I probably won't actually uh, make an assertion against a message which I didn't actually write. And so the lesson there is really be wary of making assumptions about things which you did not create. And we'll touch more on that stuff when we actually come to doing mocking and fakes. But for now, I think this wraps up the lesson nicely. Uh, we've looked at exceptions, different ways of how we can test that exceptions are going to happen. And we've also looked at a bit of expected errors and how you can check the messages, etc. And also, another thing we looked at was how to um, add strictness in your client code. And so let's move on. The ability to test well is one of the most valuable skills that you can learn as a PHP developer. If you want to take your testing skills to a new level, then follow the link below this video.